Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're gonna be doing some pruning on some shrubs that bloom and flower or fruit or whatever later in the summer. So these are things that can be pruned in the late winter and pruned pretty hard uh, because they don't carry their buds through the winter time. That's kind of an important thing to know when you're pruning this time of year. This is uh, March 1st uh, when, when, we're, when we're filming this. Uh, the early flowering spring things, typically you wanna let them bloom and then you prune them afterwards. But again, the things I'm gonna show you here bloom much later in the summer, typically. Uh, we're gonna start, for, for some reason, almost everything in this video starts with C, uh, which is, which is kind of weird. We have a calicarpa or an American beauty berry that I got from Buddy Lee a couple years ago on a trip down to Louisiana. It's a white uh, berrying, uh, white fruiting uh, calicarpa. Great plant, I mean, it's incredibly compact. It's only growing to about six feet. Uh, really, really super compact, but it will get bigger each year and I don't want it to really be bigger than it is now. I like the berries just right over top of the fence here uh, and the uh, flowers start on these sometime around May and then toward the end of the season. You get the berry set through the summer and then in the fall is when they turn white and then the birds eventually take them around about Thanksgiving or Christmas uh, is normally when they take them. This thing will grow about four feet before uh, in a single season. So I actually want to take four feet of height out of it. It's going to look kind of cruel uh, what I'm doing and I'm just using a pair of bypass loppers. The nice thing about this material uh, on this calicarpa is that it's nice and straight and I can run it through my chipper and make a uh, quick mulch out of it. Uh, this one suckers down at the base some and I'll show you after I do some pruning on this. I'm going to leave it. I'm only going to leave this thing about 18 inches high. So with this particular plant, I'm not really looking, uh, being very exacting, but when I get some of this cleared out, I'll show you how it suckers down at the bottom. And we can choose to remove some of those suckers uh, if we want to. But again, this is not a very, this is not the kind of precision pruning that you might do on some things. Calicarp is native to the southeast United States and see them in the woods frequently, especially down in coastal areas in North Carolina and going south. And this again, this is a white fruiting one that Buddy selected for his compact habit. Okay, let's see what we're missing here. The bypass loppers make quick work quick work of that. Okay. We've already fertilized everything and we're about to mulch. And so I want to get some of the last of this pruning done uh, before we do that. Okay. So getting down in here, there's a couple right down in the bottom. This stuff will come in here a little closer. You start to get suckering uh, down here in the bottom of it and you'll just get more and more and more uh, suckers if any of them are rubbing one another this is a good example uh, right here where this one is crossing over that one i can take this i could take this just further down okay that's one solution uh, that i can use this will this one will catch back up uh, but all i'm going to do is go through here here's some just small examples of it here's two Here's a branch that's just going through the middle of a bunch of other branches. You see that? So I'll, I'll just take that one all the way off. Here's another one that's just sitting and rubbing on another branch. And so after I've done that kind of uh, big pruning on it, I'll go through here and just make sure that I'm thinking about how the plant is gonna interact with itself during the season. I won't stop all of it from happening, but I can stop some portion of that plant trying to damage itself during the uh, growing season. So, and that's pretty much it. If there's something crawling across the ground, you know, I don't want this plant to be wider on the ground. I kind of want most of the growth to, to go upright. So if there's something crawling on the ground, I'll just cut it all the way back into the plant. So we did calicarpa. Now we're going to do clethra. Uh, clethra is sometimes called summer sweet. Uh, this is another native shrub that uh, we've got a white one here and two pink ones here. It didn't actually mean to do that. Uh, they were mislabeled in the container, but the white one ended up in the correct spot because it's a slightly smaller growing one. So it's worked out just fine. 
uh, these will, again, this is another summer flowering uh, sh deciduous shrub. This is a great four season plant. It, uh, the, the foliage on it looks great when it comes out. Uh, it blooms for a long time in the summer, gets more interesting pollinators than pretty much any, almost anything in this landscape. Uh, it doesn't just get the, the bees and butterflies that we think of as pollinators. It gets all these interesting uh, flies and non-stinging wasp and really interesting things uh, on the clethora every year. And then it gets great fall color. And then over time, it develops this kind of cinnamon uh, colored bark, almost crepe myrtle-like, uh, if you, th you think about a, a, the bark on a crepe myrtle. Uh, just a great, again, great four season plant. The, this is, this very tiny lot here in Raleigh, I really can't let these things get as big as they want to get in order for, in order for us to enjoy all the different plants that we want to have here. I've got to do some size control on them. One thing that can result, uh, pruning these, a lot of these native shrubs, like that calicarpa I just pruned, like this clethra I'm about to prune, Itea would be another example of that. When you're pruning these things, you're, they're going to sucker more. They're going to put up additional uh, pieces from the ground. That suckering, you know, will require some control unless it's in a place where you can just let it colonize and sucker. You know, for Scythia, which isn't native, but will do that as well. It'll just become a colony. And when I'm pruning them, I'll, you know, can, I can thin those suckers out in the future, but I will be creating more suckers by pruning on it for sure. So. I'm just gonna go down on the calicarpa. I just didn't worry about going to any bud or anything. Those are just, I and mean, it's basically uh, almost, an, I mean, they're just incredibly resilient to almost anything. Uh, these, uh, I'll go down and, you know, maybe, you know, take, take a little bit closer look along the stem where I might be able to get these to, uh, to leaf out. So this stem right here, you can see where I cut it last year, right below that, there's another, there's another branch and I can cut this right there. And I've already got a vertical branch on the side of that. I think you can, I think you can see that. And so that's what I'll do here is I'll go through and I'll cut these down. Uh, here's another branch and there's some, there's some side shoots along it. And so I can come down here and just cut right above one, just like that. And uh, that should keep it full looking good right out of the gate. Doesn't take many cuts on this smaller growing uh, white one here. And if anything's crawling across the ground, I'm definitely gonna cut that. Uh, and I'm just identifying along the stem someplace lower uh, where there's a side, where there's a side branch. Am I hitting the camera with it? <laughs> uh, okay. And then there'll just be a few random pieces here and there uh, to cut off. But again, I just want the thing to grow back to about the height it was last year and, uh, and flower. And so that's all I'm trying to accomplish here is let's get it, get it down to the size. Uh, so I was a little bit more precise with that one. You can see another thing here is these, these were the spent flowers from last year. You know, these, you know, on these native plants like this, all parts of this plant can be useful to, to uh, you know, potentially to birds. You know, like the calicarpa has bees and native pollinators all over it during the summertime, and then in the fall, the birds come along, the native birds come along and take them. Same thing on this clethra. Uh, so I'll prune the, this one's ruby spice is more upright, and I'll go basically to where I pruned it last year and do the exact same pruning. And again, I'm looking for a spot on the limb where I know um, I can see, either see a bud along the stem, which I can see, you know, you, if you get in here and I, you can see along this stem where I can force new growth. Uh, I already have a side branch on that one, so I'll just do it like that. But you can, I can see here where I could get additional growth and I can just cut right above one of those. Uh, and so very quickly make quick work of this one. I won't show you all three of these. I'll just, but I'll go through and do this one real quick. I probably should be doing, these limbs are almost a little big for my hand pruners. I'm probably dulling them a bit by doing limbs this big. I should be using my bypass loppers, which are literally laying right next to me.
but this thing's just gonna shoot right back up almost immediately. Nothing cruel here at all. Again, I'll go, after you prune these, you know, you wanna look down in them and say, and decide whether or not there's any crossing branches that are gonna cause themselves obvious problems this season. And you can go through and thin some of those out as well. Reducing, uh, reducing this plant size, you know, I find that I probably get a few less flowers, but I'm gonna get larger flowers, you know, um, by reducing the number uh, that I would have otherwise. So, you know, you'll, maybe you extend the flowering season a bit because, you know, by a few days, because without as many to support. Okay, I think that's, I think that's good. But again, here's rubbing branches. That's the, the, the next thing I look for, take that out. Uh, there you go. All right, so that's Clethra. Next up is Caryopteris, another C name. I don't know how this has uh, worked out. Again, this is a typically a late summer, early fall flowering shrub. Look how compact and perfect this first choice Caryopteris is. This has always been one of my absolute favorite uh, ornamental plants. You know, if I was putting, um, you know, if I if it was this was a much larger lot, I would be letting these things. I would be put these things in spaces where I could have allow, allowed them to become bigger uh, over time. But as folks who want to collect some plants on a very small lot, you know, we're kind of maintaining them. You know, we're trying to get them to a maintainable height and then cutting them down the amount we think they'll grow during the season to recover from that. Uh, but again probably be better you know to put the calicarpa someplace where it can be allowed to uh, uh to get much bigger i think on this caryopteris i would always cut it though this is one that uh, uh it's it's kind it's kind of spindly and it has to get bigger in order to flower and i think it would end up flopping and opening up uh, it's not, it doesn't have that rigid really rigid growth that the clethra or the uh, calicarpa had and so i think allowing it to get bigger and bigger and bigger would ultimately uh, ultimately hurt it. So this is the exact same thing. That, uh, luckily on Caryopteris, it already has, you know, it, it, it shows you all the places it's going to be growing from the next year. Uh, this starts very, very early uh, in the late winter. And so we have, we have spots all along the stems where new growth is coming already. Butterfly bushes do something similar where they're just really easy to show you where to cut. I can just cut above any of these, uh, spots on the stems you see you see where the growth is along the stem i can just cut right above one of those and again i'm just going to cut this thing down to probably a foot in height because it will recover three full feet and be blooming just above the fence out by the street which was our goal was to have something on each side of the fence uh, that would bloom I did this exact same thing last year, and you can see how full it was. This thing bloomed like crazy. Another pollinator magnet. For some reason, though, last year, this Caryopteris, which typically blooms in very late summer, one of the last of the flowering shrubs typically every year, this thing was blooming in early summer and didn't quit until we had that freeze uh, at Christmas time, which was kind of really interesting. Bloomed much longer than it typically does here's a branch going on the ground this is what I'm talking about you'll get one of these you know kind of creeping branches and here here's it rooted in here so there's a free plant there see that I can just cut that away from the the parent plant and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and then later in the season we'll come back and pop that one out of the ground and show you how to transplant it uh, somewhere but I'll give it a little bit more time rooted in the ground again and then you know we'll look down here just like we did before here's a perennial that hasn't been cut back yet a salvia uh, we'll look in here again and see if there's any crossing any branches that are rubbing against one another and get those out but that's it that's caryopteris we have so many perennial plants out here that i've uh, i did a video pruning back 
uh, perennials already, but I missed several uh, in that video. We've got a native uh, hibiscus here, um, swamp mallow uh, is one of the common names uh, for these. This, this little spot here in the front garden up against this fence stays a little more moist than, we don't have a lot of areas that stay luckily that stay real wet in this landscape but this spot stays a little more moist than other spots and it's just kind of the perfect place to put one of these native hibiscus these get flowers on them you know this big during the summertime lots and lots of sun on it early in the day and it's got this um, the tree behind it uh, blocking the sun on it later in the day but it's perfectly seems perfectly fine with that amount of sunlight just that morning sunlight this is one that you just cut pretty much right down to the uh, to the ground uh, these, again, I usually wait pretty late on pruning back these native uh, perennials just because, you know, there's some overwintering of native, uh, of native insects uh, on these, but this is literally nothing but take the thing back to the ground. These leaf out later than anything. Uh, I've had, I've grown perennial hibiscus in the nursery business for a long time. This was always the last thing, one of the last things to leaf out in the nursery, and you literally even though you knew it, <laughs> would think they were dead every year. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. When we're doing this pruning, it's a good time to find things like this ivy that have uh, popped up uh, underneath it. So, you know, by the time I found it again this next year, it would have been, you know, colonized all around the bottom of it. So um, be on the lookout for weeds when you're pruning this stuff back. This is a regular Joe Pye weed, and it gets about 12 feet tall uh, during the uh, growing season. We've got a dwarf one in the back garden, uh, but this thing right here just really, really grows. Uh, the reason, I mean, it's not the prettiest thing out here in the garden during the winter time, but I wanna show you what I mean by, it's incredible how many of these native perennials have these hollow stems. You see that? And believe it or not, some of our native pollinators can come in here and make use of these and actually survive in them over the winter. So typically what we'll do on something that has these hollow stems is we'll just mulch the plant. I need to get this material down. This is still an ornamental garden and I'm trying to, you know, uh, you know have it look, you know, you know, pretty good out here. So I'm, but I'm not going to run these through the grinder just in case there's anything left uh, in them. I'm just going to basically allow it to mulch itself uh, in place. And then we're about to put some mulch over the top of them. So uh, they're really easy to cut up like this. See how long this is? <laughs> See how tall that actually was? Uh, and that's, that's basically what we'll do. But again, it's got to be cut to the ground, but I just wanted to show that off. Just, you know, the reason we're keeping some of these perennials up through the winter, even though they may not be the most attractive thing in the world, uh, there, is, there is a reason for it. We're on a roll with natives uh, in this video. Caryopteris is the only thing uh, before now that is uh, not a native. Uh, this is Cestrum parki, which in parts of the world is very invasive. I, know, I don't understand this plant's become very invasive in Australia. It's not invasive here uh, in North Carolina. Our winters control it. Our winters knock it to the ground uh, completely. This is maybe um, top three we have a lot of flowering things in this garden so uh it's hard to uh you know say something is more popular to a hummingbird than something else but this is right at the top of the hummingbirds list uh this thing blooms a good portion of the summer but then it dies completely to the ground uh during the uh, winter time uh and we come in here right now and just again just cut it right i cut this one right to the ground it's already suckering down at the bottom and so this is a two-part pruning job i'll explain that in just a second the two parts to this pruning job are uh, this is way we'll cut it back like this uh, completely and then uh, in about six or eight weeks these suckers will be up about this tall and i probably only want about five six seven of them something like that I don't want the 30 that are here. And so we'll let them get up about this tall. And then I'll come in here with a pair of hand pruners. Uh, this'll be probably around the 1st of May and just select down to maybe, again, this was one, two, three, four, five, maybe seven that I kept last year. I'll do the same thing. And over the course of May and June, it'll reach back up to about six feet in height. It's got a root system of a six foot tall plant. It won't take it long to get back to six feet uh, in that, and then it'll start blooming again, maybe the first of June. And again, it'll bloom all summer. Hummingbirds absolutely love this plant. 
this is one make sure you know if you're looking up Sestrum Parkey, make sure it's not an invasive in your area some of these uh, invasive kind of subtropical plants like this uh, winter sensitive plants uh, lantana is a great example of that are not invasive in my area because the winter kind of the winter controls that just make sure it's not an invasive in your area and if it's not great plant uh, for pollinators when I was printing the clethora, I talked about when you're, when you're controlling the height on some of these plants, the ones that have a tendency to sucker will definitely sucker. And so that clethora, you know, again, will, will do some suckering and I can choose, I can pick and choose in the future whether I want to keep some of those new suckers or cut them out. It's just meaning it, new growth comes up off the roots. And so, you, you know, you can, it become a colony. Well, that cestrum back there, the one, the reason that I'm not keeping 30 shoots uh, that will you know to come up like that they'll almost compete with one another and i will get a less vigorous less you know shorter bloomed plant uh, probably smaller flowers just a completely different stature to that plant if i prune it down to five or seven main canes that aren't you know interacting with one another uh, then i'll get a much more vigorous much more long bloomed plant uh, that's just been my experience the more uh, you know, if you have a bank or something like that and you're growing clethora and itea and some of our native plants that will sucker like that, that suckering's probably beneficial because it will hold the slope in place, that kind of thing. But it does, it can take away energy, you know, eat, you know it, just, it just leaves a smaller amount of energy from the roots for each of those suckers. Okay, last up, um, another C, this is Circus canadensis or uh, red bud. This is a weeping Golden Falls red bud. Uh, looks like, honestly, looks like cousin it uh, when it's bloom when it's blooming out here. That's what I've named this thing as the cousin it tree. This is a very fast growing tree. All of the growth comes straight down to the ground, and very quickly it comes down to the ground and starts spreading across the ground in the spring. Red buds, any pruning we were going to do on them, we would do after they bloom. My experience with this plant in the first three years I've had it, it is, does not flower as well as other, um, as other red buds. It has buds on it and I can see we're going to get more flowers than we've had in the past couple of years, but we're not getting them all the way out here to the ends of the stems. And so all I'm gonna do with this is lift it up off the ground a bit because I know as soon as it leaves out, it just goes right back down to the ground and uh, I don't want it just spreading all across the ground. So this is, this is like the easiest pruning job uh, I just go along the bottom and just basically lift all of these up to the same height. They're, red buds are segmented along the stem, and so each of these little segments, you know, that there's a bud at the end of it. So you can just cut them, you know, right, right here. If you can get a little closer stuff, I'll show them um, what I mean by this. But you'll see it's basically uh, in, little, in little segments. That's pretty easy to see. Uh, these individual segments. So if you cut one, you know, if I cut it right here, that's where the growth is gonna come from. If I cut it right here, that's where the growth is gonna come from. So, you know, about that height uh, off the ground uh, is where I want it. So I just go through and cut them right, you know, right to those buds. This is all the prune. This one also has a lot of cross branching in here uh, that I, I'm gonna need, you know, I'm gonna need to go in here and do a little bit of thinning at some point as well. I may wait for it to leaf out uh, to, see, to see that. And again, I actually do have some flower buds up in here, so maybe I'll just leave that for now. And then after it finishes flowering, I'll come up through here and see. Again, I've got rubbing, rubbing branches, but for now, I'm just basically going to lift, up the, lift it up off the ground because I know it'll grow two feet immediately. I cannot believe how fast these things grow. I pruned this thing in the middle of summer last year. I pruned it this time last year, you know, right around the 1st of March, and by the summer, I uh, had to do it again. Uh, really incredible how fast these, uh, these weeping red buds can grow. I think that's, I think that's about it. Uh, hasn't, haven't found this to cause it even, even slow it down. Um, it, you'll notice it's staked. Uh, I, it, it's super thin for the amount, for the height that it is, the amount of branching it has, for the rate of growth it has. Uh, I've had a, um, 
uh, it's incredible how you know how heavy this thing actually is. And so I think it's almost going to be permanently uh, staked. And what I'll do is I'll occasionally come in here and cut where where it's hold, where where I've got it attached. Um, I'll cut that strap and put it in a different spot occasionally, so I'm not cutting into the tree. I did that a couple times last year. Uh, I'll basically reattach it up here and then cut this one off. Uh, but I think it's going to have to be permanently staked. You cannot see the stake during the growing season. There you go. There's some of the pruning uh, that we're doing. Again, red buds, typically you'd want to wait and enjoy the flowers on them. They're in flower right now in the area and the flowers are edible if you want to try, uh, if you want to try red bud flowers. So thank you guys very much for following along uh, that we're going to have uh, an upcoming video on pruning some of the damaged plants from the uh, winter damage very soon.